Hello, welcome back to our discussion on this Eliot's poem, The Wasteland. We have done the first two sections and now we have just ended the third section, that is the fire sermon. And there also we have seen half dozen frames. The sordid situation of the Thames River now and uh, that is contrasted with the glory of the past. Inexplicable splendor of iron in white and gold. That is applicable to the Magnus uh, Martyr as well as to the river and its bed. We also saw that other uh, frames like you buy the water sublime and I sat down and wept and you see the three different aspects of that. One is uh, that is about uh, Eliot's, Eliot's own life and second is about the Babylonian the Jews in Babylonia, as in Babylonian exile, when they were there, they say that they cannot sing about uh, Sion in a foreign land. And, and the third one, I we saw that it is also to do with uh, the revival of the present situation of the present maimed uh, Fisher King, isn't it? And then we also saw that there is two other frames of the maiden singing. One, the first song about thinking about the present situation and the second uh, second song is about thinking about the past glory, isn't it? Present, past glory. And uh, we also saw that uh, there is uh, what we call the physical reality of the wasteland, the exhausted land, that the last fingers of the leaf clutch and sink into the wet bang. So that also we saw. Now we come to the continue with uh, what we call the other frames and uh, what they have to how they they are going to uh, they are going to argue for or we can say how these frames are uh, made one after another it's presented one after another to show the morbidity and the nightmarish situation of the wasteland. So, now uh, the first one we can see is the today's phrase. But at my back from time to time I hear the sound of horns and motors which shall bring Sweeney to Mrs. Potter in the spring. Oh, the moon shone bright on Mrs. Potter and her daughter. They washed their feet in soda water. Half a dozen lines in this poem. But you can see, there is, what I must say, such symbolic and semantic density. We won't find, I think, in other uh, passages of this poem. What you, you can see is, in this half a dozen lines, already there are four very clear-cut references, allusions are there. See, starting with, the, but at my back, from time to time I hear the sound of horns and motors which shall bring. Now that reminds us of to his co-mistress and Andrew Marvel. So there is a burning. Here you can see four kinds of burning. That is the thing. That's what I, I, I am trying to I am trying to tell you. That is four kinds of burning. Burning situation. This. So the 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 pen is yes, burning, huh? The pen is not burning, but uh, uh, other things are present. Okay, let's see that, uh, what is happened, what has happened to all these ah, yes. Burning, burning. So there you have what? This is today's first frame. Or the eighth frame, when you look at it in the totality. Now, what does he say is that? To his coin mistress, Carpe Diem, capture the day. Carpe Diem, Carpe Diem means, that is Latin, Carpe Diem. Diem, Diem means day. So Carpe Diem, a theme, that you, you know, I will not explain this, sir. he is arguing that your virginity will be eaten up by worms and the grave is not a nice place for love making. She is coaxing him, persuading him. But what she does, he, and finally he says that he also tells her that 
uh, I always hear at my bike. At my bike, I always hear time swinger chariot hurrying near. So that is. So that is the variation that the theater is playing upon. But at my bike, from time to time, I hear. See the sound of horns and motors. Uh, that is a variation of this line. That is. So the first illusion is that there you can find the burning. What is the burning? The love is burning for the beloved. Look at that. So that is the first illusion. Second one you can see horns and motors. That is the uh, first one, then second one. Horns and motors. That is reminds us of Diana and the uh, acting. When the actin and his uh, ha, ha, hounds, they were going for hunting. Diana and her limbs were having bath in a pool, the river. And then she, probably they were naked and uh, this man, uh, like a peeping tom, might have taken a glance. But there is some kind of burning there also. Maybe a mild type of burning you can say, but still it's burning. That's why he uh, took a glance. No? And what is the result? The result, the consequences is Diana curses him. And he stands up with a stag and his own house hand him and uh, eat him up. Isn't it? So that is second building. And in this, what happens is there is a final, it's a consuming type of building. So, building. so he has to sacrifice his life for that. He lost his life, so he not a sacrifice, you don't call it a sacrifice. But he lost his life. Now, third wedding, of course, is you can see this is uh, that is Sweeney. Sweeney is a character that we find in other poems of T.S. Eliot also. He is a lustful person, lust. He is uh, uh, a synonym for lust, you can see. So he comes uh, to Mrs. Porter and her daughter. There is also a wedding. It's a very clear cut wedding, you can say, no? Yes. So swimming. So here you can see the first one is uh, to his coy mistress. Uh, to his coy mistress, that reference, mistress. The second one you can see Diana and the Diana and Actin. Actin. Diana and Actin. Isn't it? Actin. Actin. And the uh, third one is. You can see Sweeney, Mr. Sweeney. And the fourth one is soldiers. Because the soldiers they sing the song. Oh the moon. This is popular song among soldiers and soldiers also uh, have a tendency for such kind of the singing good times and that is. So there also there's a bit soldiers. Oh the moon shone bright on Mrs. Porter and her daughter. It is a popular song. Now you can see what I want to stress is this you can find different kinds of burning here. One as you find in the Koi Mistress, second Diana and Actin, and third you find the Sweeney himself and Mrs. Potter, and this next one is this one. That is soldiers. So you you can you get four kinds of burning. Understand? And uh, in in other ways. Another point that you can notice it is there is such a semantic density. See, in the sense that you can find in terms of semantics, you can see concatenation there. Concatenation is in operation. Concatenation that is linking together of meaning. Polysemia that is many meanings, see, many meanings, and also radiation. So these are all terms that we use in semantics. Radiation means from the center, other meanings of radiate. Polysemia means many meanings and concatenation means connected. Things are connected like this. So all these four images, all these four additions, they refer to one and the same thing that is the burning. You can see also now in the end of this section you find burning, 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 burning. And also the going come the section comes to an end building. Now what are all these things? Maybe these are all linked to this kind of frames in the poem or such. Okay. 
Then immediately after that, that is contrasted with another uh, frame, and that is this is French. Please forgive my pronunciation. A O C O the infants Chandan de la Coupole. So that is uh, the English meaning is A and 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 O voice. Voice of infants, infants, infants. This and o oh, the voice of the infants singing, chanting, chanting is in in English also you know chanting, chanting a hymn. So chanting be the kupal, the dome. So here listen to the voice of children, innocent children singing. In the dome, the children's voices singing in the dome. That is, just moments before entry of the great night into the chapel palace. That is a beautiful heavenly celestial song that you hear. Here you find the lust and the kinds of dirty, if dirty uh, connections and events and lingings and so. Immediately after that, it is contrasted with heavenly music sung by the children, innocent children. And uh, well, at, at one time, when the the grail knight is washing his feet, because just before that you hear, no? but at my back, from time to time, I hear the sound of horns and motors which shall bring. Mrs. Po, uh, Mrs. So it's really to Mrs. Porter. Oh, the moon shone bright on Mrs. Porter and her daughter. They washed their feet in soda water. So immediately after that you get this. Why are these people washing their feet in soda water? It is those days there is a belief that eh, if you wash your feet, it's not only the feet fleas are the part of the body. Maybe the whole body, just by washing uh, feet with the soda water, how can we prevent this thing? That means that is preventing a venereal diseases. That is what we call in today's terms uh, uh, sexually, tra tra sexually transmitted diseases. STD, please. In today, today's terms, we will say it is STD. STD, sexually transmitted diseases. So to prevent that, the, those people believe that if they wash their feet with the, the feet is just really part of the body, the whole body maybe, you know, that is part stands for the whole. Synecdoche is that is figure of speech, yes. Part standing for the whole. So feet uh, and they can prevent this the onset of uh, venereal diseases. But immediately after that you find this oh Oh, listen to the song of innocent children, the voice, the celestial voice in the dome of the chapel. See that? Now, one thing you must, uh, at least I, I consider, this chapel and this background, if you want to see, you have to go to the final section, that is death by water. Sorry, what the thunder said, death by water is the fourth section. So this is uh, what the Tantra said. There you find uh, two passages, beginning with uh, a woman drew her long black hair out tight and fiddled whisper music on the strings. So here is an unidentified woman, some mysterious woman, as you will find in a game of chess, there is a mysterious woman who, who that woman is we don't know. Isn't it? We, you can see towards the end of the description of the woman's parlor. You get these lines you now under the fire, under the firelight, under the brush, her hair glowed into glowed into fiery points. Isn't it? Ah, spread into sorry. Her hair spread into fiery points, glowed into words, and then would be Savagely still. Terrible, no? That is that kind of atmosphere. 
See, under the firelight, under the brush, her hair spread into fiery points. And then, then what happens? Spread into fiery points, glowed into words, but she did not utter a single syllable, glowed into words, then would, would be silent, would be savadrishti. So, the say continuation of that, maybe that woman, there is always cross references within the poem. That mysterious atmosphere, that nightmarish atmosphere, that ghoulish atmosphere. Understand that? Or you can say that murky atmosphere. Or you can see, compare this atmosphere with the opening lines, opening scene of Hamlet, where the Hamlet's father's ghost was about to appear to Horatio and his friends. So that's it. So to that you can compare. Uh, I, I think it's like that, that kind of atmosphere. Or the scene, the moments before appearance of Dracula. Yes. That, that kind of terrible, mysterious, ghoulish, ghostly, nightmarish scene. A woman who, who, is, who that woman is, that itself is a mystery. So that creates a kind of mysterious atmosphere. A woman. Her name is not given. So a woman drew her long black hair out tight and fiddled, fiddled whisper music on those strings. And then bats with baby faces in the violet hour uh, whistled and beat their wings and uh, crawled head downward down, head downward down uh, and crawled head downward down on a blackened wall. That is the second nightmare sight that you hear. See, just before this, all, all these things is happening around the chapel because the next passage will show you that. And the third terrible sight is, mysterious sight is, and upside down in air where towers tolling reminiscent bells that kept the hours. Tolling reminiscent bells, reminiscent bells. You think of the, the flowed over the hill down King William Street where St. Mary would not kept the hour. The dead sound at the final stroke of nine. So such towers. That is reminiscent. Reminiscent time. So the and upside down where upside down in air where the towers see upside down totally disturbed you know upside down and these towers tolling reminiscent time that kept the hours and what is the fourth one everything is upside down everything is dilapidated everything is on the on the way to degeneration, isn't it? And the fourth side is and voices singing from voices singing from empty systems and exhausted wells. So that four nightmarish images come before us. This where does this take place? This is you can see in and around the grave chapel. He is watching Parsifal, the innocent knight, to get courage. He spent 20 years of hard labor doing various kinds of spiritual exercises, mortification, pen doing penance, atonement for his sins or somebody else, a vicarious atonement. Yes. After all this, he has now come getting ready to enter the getting ready to enter the chapel, the great chapel, the perilous chapel. Otherwise, what will happen is he won't be able to even stand there. Only because a pure knight, a foolish knight, fool here means pure, innocent knight, can come there and enter the chapel perilous and ask the relevant question, whom does the 
will serve. Get the correct and right answer. Only by doing this, the main fisher thing can be healed. The healing of the fisher thing is the most important thing here. Why? Because the land has become infertile. The people, people of this land, they welcome winter. Winter kept us warm. Winter kept us warm. Covering earth and forget for snow. Feeding a little life with dry tubers. What about spring? April is the cruelest month. So such a life it has to be brought back to fertility. And for that somebody has to make the sacrifice. And he is ready to make the sacrifice and washing his feet. Then the surrounding places, description of the surrounding places, a graphic description of the surrounding places of the chapel. A woman, a mysterious woman, Whisper music. Second is bats whistling and beating their wings and also crawling downward, head downward down on a blackened wall. Everything is black connected with darkness. Darkness, yes. Because as we know, evil spirits, they like darkness. That's why you know, in Macbeth we come across witching time of the night. Witching time of the night. When the witches, they go around, they go for picnic and all those things. That is it. This is that thing. So, such a time, such an atmosphere, you get here also. But the night is not, the innocent night is not at all afraid because he has got a, that much of spiritual spiritual, uh, that much of virtue, he has earned that much of spiritual strength, so that much of virtue, so no evil spirits, no dark forces of darkness can harm him. So he is so confident, he is standing there and then washing his feet, while his, while this washing is going on, what happens here is the innocent children singing in the dome. That's the thing. The heavenly choir is singing. Inkardihi, and then continuing that atmosphere, that mysterious ghouls, ghostly murky atmosphere. Again, there is another passage that is in this decayed hole among the mountain, in the faint moonlight. Again, the darkness, the faint moonlight. The grass is singing over the tumbled graves about the chapel. The chapel, only the wind's home. It has no windows. The door is swinging. The door swings. There is only a door and it swings. And then finally, the passage comes to an end with the dry bones can harm no one. So these two passages, if you make a close reading of this, this should be connected to, or this should be read immediately after the celestial song, celestial chanting of chanting by innocent children in the dome, dome of the chapel. Understand? So here that is this one line, this one line that is chanting, etc. It brings before you allusions of different allusions from different uh, stories and situations. See, it comes, it, 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 the allusion mainly comes from, mainly it comes from Jesse L. Westerns, from rituals to rituals romance. Isn't it? And then all the other stories connected with the uh, tales of the Grail Knight. You get these allusions and references. So, this is the second phrase. First, one, first frame is burning, 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 burning. Four burnings. Now we get to what is called the, the, the singing of the children. Singing of the children and the connected things as I told you. After immediately after singing of the children, you should go to what the Tantra said and read those two, those two passages connected like this. And after that what we find is again, you find a, uh, different kinds of burning. See? Uh, the next one is twi 
फिर फिर जेट 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 सो रूटली फॉस्टरिंग ऑलरेडी वी आर सीन द वायलेंस सेक्स दैट इस वायलेंस सेक्स सो किंग इंट्रोड्यूस रेप्स फिलोमेंट and then what is happening is that we have already seen okay now that you can say third phase the philomena philomena myth yes philomena and then we have got the fourth one we we'll write you know we we'll write this you we we'll write this so we we'll write this so good time how people seek or go after Where it is a good time under the brown fog of a winter noon. We have seen under the brown fog of a winter dawn. In the where in the first section, the burial of the. Now it is noon already under the brown fog of a winter noon, and before that unreal city, unreal city. So this. This we will come to that point again. Throbbing between real and unreal, throughout the point of time. There's another thread that passes through all the frames of this poem till the end. When we till the end, just before we hear Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Till then, from beginning to end, you will find this thread and this unites all the frames. And it provides unity to the entire poem, throbbing. So, unreal city. You will take this up in detail tomorrow or another day when you are uh, ready to uh, discuss further, get into further discussion. So, here what happens is unreal city under the brown fog of a winter noon. Mr. Eugene is the Smyrna merchant. And shaven with pocket full of currents, CAF London documents that site that is commerce, where will a bill of lading and documents that site only when you give the documents you will get the you will get your goods delivered. So documents that site asked me in demotic French to land in him Cannon Street Hotel. Followed by a weekend in the metropole, and the associations are very clear. Homo sex. In the Israeli time, this was a, this is a, this was a crime. This was a crime. You could be booked. Police could book you, arrest you. But now in many countries, it's not a crime. It is a sexual orientation. They consider a psychologist and psychiatrist say that it's a kind of sexual orientation. We need not blame them. Suppose you have a, you have a, a, you you are you you suffer from fever. Is it your mistake? <laughs> It's like so they answer just so silly, <coughs> silly these days. Okay, so there you have got the the fourth one. That is Smyrna Merchant. Yes, Smyrna Merchant. Smyrna Merchant. And then we have got. Probably the uh, a section where Tiersley has lavished many lines of his poem, an event, an event which for him he thinks. I mean, we should also think like that now with the Tiersley because uh, we are not. Uh, We we don't reach anywhere near this level as far as the imagination and his ability to present things like this are, are concerned. So we don't want to have any any we don't want to enter into any kind of discussion on such subjects. So he said that we can very well say that many lines are many lines in the poem have been devoted to this particular event. And how important is that? You can see as we proceed. See the violet hour, the time of the day, the violet hour, grand, very grand beginning. See, all the words used in this section are also very grand. You can see 
satire, sarcasm, and irony, irony of situation, irony of language, irony of words used, all such, all possible, uh, possible feelings like this are aroused in this particular section, that event between the typist twist with the sex and the young man carbunglers twist with the sex. So, at the wild travel. When the eyes and back turn upwards from the dusk, till then she was, she was working, she was a typist. From the dusk, when the human engine leads, he is not, she is not a human being, she is a human engine. That you will see later why this human engine phrase is used to describe this woman, this typist girl. When the human engine waits like a taxi throbbing waiting, throbbing, it already told you, the city is throbbing between real and unreal. This girl is throbbing between, uh, we don't know, for the time being, we will try to find out as we proceed. Throbbing. So at the violet hour, when the eyes and back turn upward from the desk, when the human engine waits like a taxi throbbing, waiting, I Tiresias go blind. I Tiresias go blind, throbbing between two lives. So how many throbbings are there now? The city is unreal, city is throbbing. The violet hour throbbing. Why? Because it's a parting thing for the day. The violet hour, two lights, neither day, neither light nor darkness. So unwilling to part, unwilling to say goodbye. So throbbing between light and darkness. Understand? Then the girl here type is throbbing between probably uh, for, because she she is now falling on the thorns of life. Throbbing. Throbbing. And what about now? Tiresias. I Tiresias, though blind, throbbing between two lives, old man with a wrinkled female breast can see. There is another, another throbbing. What is that? Blind and sight. His blindness and his sight. His throbbing between that. Blind, dark and light. There was. So throbbing between, can see, what can he see, what is the significance of Tiresias, who is Tiresias, how can, with whom can we identify Tiresias with etc. We will see tomorrow, not today. For the time being, because it will, it will take some time, we have to go through the entire poem to find out who Tiresias, Tiresias is. Because Eliot himself says, what Tiresias sees is the candle of the point. So who sees the candle of the point? That is it. That we will see. We will unravel that mystery tomorrow or next day when you come here for this discussion. Continue this discussion. Till then, let us wait anxiously for that, that uh, mystery to uh, Anxiously search for the key to that mystery. Understand? So he can see. What can what can he see at the violet hour, the evening hour? At the violet hour, the evening hour. That that uh, yes, that uh, at the eye tiresias. The blind throbbing between two lives. Old man with wrinkled female breast can see at the violet hour, the evening hour. So there comes the reference to Sappho's song to the evening star. Evening hour, evening hour that strives homeward 
strives homeward and brings the sailor home from sea, the type is home at tea time. That is the comparison. So the sailor comes after a days of hard work, also entering into many perilous situations. But here there is no such thing, but the homecoming is both the, there are, for both of them it is homecoming. For one it is after hard labor and the other it is some automatic work like an engine. It's a human engine. She is coming, yes. So at the violet hour, the evening hour brings, uh, that strives homeward and brings the sailor home from sea. The type is home at tea time. Clears her breakfast after coming here. She is not in a hurry. Clears her breakfast, lights her stove, and lays out food in tins. So she is doing some. She is doing some duties connected with her day-to-day -day life. She clears her breakfast. That means after taking his breakfast. She did not have time to clear it. So now she is doing the pending work is being done. A lot of work she has to do. So now she is doing the pending work. Some more work is pending that we that she will do later. So now this. And then out of the window, perilously spread her drying combinations, touched by the sun's last rays. Uh, upon the pillow, upon the divan are piled at night her bed, stocking, slippers, camisoles and stays. So that is the next routine work that she is doing. She is spreading all her personal belongings so that the sun's rays can dry, dry them off, dehydrate them, so, so to say. Isn't it? So it is a simple girl, working like an engine, she is doing routine work, she comes home, then she, she clears her breakfast and after she likes a stout or making some coffee or tea or something like that. That is not mentioned here, that is understood. And then afterwards you can see that she he she is laying on food in tins around there, maybe for tomorrow. Because in the morning she may not be having much time. We do not know. And then next thing is next thing she does is she is uh, drying her personal belongings, like camisoles, stays, stockings and slippers and so on. Then comes in that sound again. I, Tiresias, old man with the female ducks, perceived the scene and foretold the rest. So I saw this, you see. And then I also made a conclusion, what is going to happen. I too awaited the expected guest. Some guest is going to come here. The guest in search of good time. Like Lil's husband. He is in search of some good time. So he will be coming. And the prophet that who is the wrinkled breast. There is another person there, you know, in the beginning of the poem, there was a wrinkled prophet, and that was Sibyl. Now this is the counterpart of that, maybe. If you want to consider, argue, you can find, if you can argue convincingly, you can say that this wrinkled prophet and that wrinkled prophet is the same. That is up to you. You can, you can argue, you know, but there is plenty of time for you to argue and therefore you try and find out. But you have to base your arguments and your conclusions on the text, not any other thing. Yes. There you go. And so you say, I too awaited the expectations. Now, the description of the guest, who is that? He, the young man, carbuncular arrives. Pimpled face. That shows that uh, there is a sign of lust. A person who has got pimples, once upon a time, people believed that it is a sign of lust. These days, of course, if there is a small pimple like that, immediately you would have got to fair and lovely and all kinds of creams and doctors and skin specialists and dermatologists both means the same thing one is technical other is popular so dermatologists then will be in action and see that there is not even the trace of it understand that trace of it now that is not the case here uh, carbon arrives 
a small land agents club with one bold stare, one of the law on which assurance sits, that is infinitely complex, and that is come of last by a bold stare. Yes. Because he is also a poor man, he is a house agents club. And he comes seeking good time. He has no money like the Smirna Marjan. Yes, this Manna was a wealthy person, so he calls people to the hotels. But here he cannot go to a hotel, he cannot go to a, even a coffee hospital, and he comes to this poor ladies, poor girls, throbbing like a human engine, throbbing poor ladies, apartment, a single room apartment, where is a kitchen, bedroom, and everything. The divan on which she is spreading these things at night, her bed, that is two in one. So during the day, she will be using that for spreading her spirits, personal belongings and then drying them, getting them dried by the sun's rays at night, that will be turned into a better. So such a poor, the poverty stricken. That is, it tells us of the poverty of working class people those days, after the First World War. Already we have seen uh, 10 million people were left unemployed. 10 million people were left unemployed. In such a situation, what chance this poor lady has for a useful work while employment? So let's see she take it. And he is a small house agent. Well. He comes. With one bold stare, one of the law on which assurance sits like a silk hat on a blackboard millionaire. Yes. That is, blackboard bad bad millionaires. Means old merchants, they became overnight rich, that is the reference, immediately after the war. It will be like saying that the Geo mobile phone sits in the hands of Ambani. Because Geo mobile phone knows that he is the, the producer is Ambani, isn't it? the marketing personality is Ambani, the profit will be collected by the Ambani. So everything is online. See, like that. The silk hat is manufactured by the Bradford Miller. And so his hat he is wearing. That much of confidence he has got. My hat. So that comparison you can see now. Comparison, of course, you can see that is for a, a, a sarcastic and also ironic. Isn't it? Yes. So it is like a silk hat on a black born millionaire. And then what happens? He comes, he arrives there. The, his appearance accept. The time is propitious, as he guesses. What is the time? For seeking good time, the time is propitious. What is uh, what is the description of the propitious time? The meal is ended. She is bored and tired. That is the propitious time for seeking good time. Endeavors to engage her with caresses, which though unreproved, if undesired. She has, she has absolutely no feeling. She is almost 70% dead. Like all the wastelanders, she is also, she cannot react to anything. April is the cruelest. Breeding lilacs out of the dead land. Mixing memory and descent, stirring dull roots with the spring rain. Spring rain falls, but there is no reaction. I told you at the beginning of this poem, when we started this poem, I told you, what did I say? Suppose a patient is ventilated. And you said that if you run a race, you will get the one kilo of gold. What will be the reaction of that man? Any number of kilos, I cannot even know. I am in ventilator. So, wastelanders are in with, like patients in a ventilator, with the ventilator support. So, she is also like that. So, what is endeavors to engage here with caresses, which do unreproved, if undesired. She doesn't say go, but she doesn't decide. Then, what happened? The next move in this chess game is. Flashed and decided he assaults her at once. Exploring hands finds no difference. 
No difference. His vanity request, no response. And makes and and makes a welcome of indifference. So those three lines. How what we find in the opening lines, April is the closed month. This is another. You can see another like the cubistic painting now. Cubism in painting. This is another cube. And that is another cube. April is the closest month is one cube. And this is another cube. So that, that it is it is reinforcing that image of patient on a ventilator. Patient on a patient on a ventilator. Anesthetized people. Anesthesia. Everyone is. Even this sexual encounter is, uh, is under anesthesia, we can say. Look at that. What, what kind of a life is that? Welcome of indifference. Then, I tell you, see us how force of bed all enacted on the same bed or divan. Why same bed or divan? Like battle of melee? Well, all the words are saying so. He refers to my telepathy. So, mele. So, like that, he says. All the encounters, human relationships, like this. I have a force suffer. Same bed or divine. That's the thing. And I, Tiresias, I, Tiresias, force suffer all. Enacted on the same bed or divine. I who sat by teams below the walls and walked among the lowest of the dead. The universal sweep. It's not only this world but the other world. That is the universal sweep of the experience of Tiresias. So that is why the, that is why that's one of the reasons why DSL says that what Tiresias is is the content of this poem. This world, the other world, another world, and uh, not Netherlands, <laughs> another world, Netherlands, this world, that world, upper world, lower world. So that is, he says, like his universal state. And the continuous encounter continues bestows one final patronizing kiss and gropes his way down finding the stairs unlit. So the war is over. Now we come to the post-war situation. What is the post-war situation? The war is over. War is no war. Like Charles Borlier has said, no, the Gulf War did not take place. And the Gulf War will not take place. <laughs> did not play with, will not take place like that. So this war is like the Gulf War. Described by Charles Baudelaire. So, after the war, the war is over. Now, what is the post war situation? That is more tragic. What is the post war situation? She turns and looks for a moment in the glass, hardly aware of her departed lover. Her brain allows one half formed thought to pass. Well, that is done. I am glad it is over. Well, that is done, I am glad it is over. I am glad I welcome winter because winter keeps us warm and then feeds us the dried tubers. So, well, that is done and I am glad it is over. Then we have got a reference to Oliver Goldsmith's Selection of selection of Olivia by Thorn says a lovely woman stoops to folly and paces about her room again alone. Only that much. So in that story you find that Olivia is about to commit suicide so that there will be some repentance. She can create some repellence in the mind of Tony. But here is another thing, says she smothers her hair with automatic hand, automatic engine, automatic hand, like a wiper of the garment. 
right by right wiper. So automatic hand and places a and puts a record on the gramophone. This is the most tragic part of this poem, and especially the post-war description here in these lines. So it tells you what wasteland is. What has happened to wasteland is no emotion, no life. That is, they are living. We who are living, we who are living are now dying. What the Tandra Sarp will say. Somebody. After torture, red on sweaty faces, after the frosty silence in the gardens, after the agony in stony places, the shouting and the crying, prison palace and reverberations of thunder of spring or distant mountains, he who was living is now dead, and we who are living are now dying. That is the that is, we who are living are now dying. That is the situation. And this, more than that, what do you want? This frame it tells us, this frame clearly presents before you, before me, before everyone, before those in upper world and those in lower world, those in locations like these, 